All right, guys. This is the last one here. So welcome back to the unboxing and first impression of our budget-friendly kettle series. Now, if this is the first video that you are watching out of the four, just know that I'm currently testing out four separate budget-friendly, well, budget-friendly kettles that I feel might be a good fellow EKG alternative for anybody who is looking for one. Now, all four of these kettles are received at the same time and I am currently, well, at, at the time of you watching this actual video, I probably would have already used all four of these kettles for the past, I guess, four weeks now. But I am releasing these on a weekly basis just so it gives me a bit more time to edit and, you know, do all that stuff. At the end of this video, so hopefully by next week, so the following video, I will have a head-to-head -head comparison of all four of these. But anyways, like I said, this is the last one. Let's get this done. Let's go. All right, so as I'm opening this package, uh, there's one thing I do want to mention about this kettle in particular. I bought this because I really, really like the way that it looks. It looks very simplistic. It looks very, very sleek. However, it's a new product on Amazon. Usually I'm a little bit wary about that just because it does not have a lot of reviews. I'm not sure what's gonna happen to this down the line. And also this is not eligible for Prime as of time of recording, or at least as of time that I purchased this kettle. So normally speaking, I wouldn't usually choose a product like this on Amazon, but because I did like the design so much, I decided to give it a chance. All right, let me go ahead and get the big box out of the way so you guys can see this better. All right, so this is called the Miroko Gooseneck Kettle uh, MIEK005. Now I think you guys will see in a minute on um, what I mean by the simplistic design. Overall, this box itself is very, very similar quality to three out of the four kettles that I have purchased. Once again, they are all $70 or less. I believe this one was around $50 or $60. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Hopefully I'll have it on the screen right here. In terms of sort of overall packaging quality, this one, I, I, I like the design. It's very, very simple. It's just like the overwear one. There's not a whole lot of graphics on the outside, which I really appreciate. Just have this nice silver grayish finish on the kettle itself. It have a website. It just have kettle's name. I like it. Doesn't actually explain anything about the function of the kettle. Cool. All right, any, anyways, I guess nothing else to do but to open it. Okay, so it does have a environmentally friendly paper cushioning, which I do appreciate. I don't like to see styrofoam so much. It just makes it a whole lot easier to um, try to recycle and I guess discombobulate and everything. So a instruction manual. It's on a, a quite nice soft paper. It looks like good graphics. Uh, I guess this is kind of a relief. I was I was worried that this might be a very, you know, like very cheap <laughs> uh, a knockoff sort of style uh, kettle, but it looks like the, the manual is actually very nicely designed. It's light, nicely laid out. It's got good graphics, it's got good paper. Good to see. And of course, just a thank you card. It does have a one and a half year warranty. And of course, it's always nice to see a support email on here. This is going to be the initial quick start guide. Uh, it does have, right, it explains the functions, explains the LCD display, uh, the little toggles. And of course, it gives you a quick instruction on how to do pull overs, just in case if you are new to this. All right, so removing the paper upper protection. I don't know. So far, this is turning out to be my favorite kettle so far out of the four. As long as the user experience holds up, uh, this one seems to be doing quite well right off the start. All right, so we have a squared off base right up here. So one thing right off the bat that I'm going to have to knock against this one is just how plasticky the overall base seems to feel. Two out of the four kettles that I'm testing have a aluminum upper, which makes the entire base just feels up, up a lot more premium. This one is quite plasticky on the bottom and it's got just a very like a relatively plasticky finish, which does cheapen up the look a little bit, which is a little bit unfortunate, but some of you guys at home probably might not even care, but it's worth a mention. So the kettle itself is right here. One of the reasons why I really, really like the design is one, because it have a very simple design. It's actually very, very similar to the fellow EKG in terms of a simple display and some, a simple dial system. And the handle shape itself is very, very similar again to the fellow EKG. So when I was looking at it, even though it's not 
eligible for prime shipping even though it's a fairly new product but because of the way the kettle looked I thought it might be a very very nice candidate to replace the fellow EKG as a budget option uh, right off the bat as far as the build quality out of all four of the kettles it does have the deepest groove on the side over there and it does have a metal uh, filter screen which I don't see on any of the other three kettles so in terms of the internals this one does seem the best built out of the four coming from the fellow EKG the handle itself does feel very very familiar to hold in terms of weight distribution it does feel very very uh, familiar to, which is nice and the kettle itself is in this satin uh, matte finish and the brand logo is in this reflective shiny paint which is very subtle and very very tasteful the Spout itself have a once again very similar shape to the EKG This might just actually be almost designed with the EKG in mind It have a very similar spout here Let me just bring in the EKG to show you guys right away Alright so right here this is the EKG and this is the Miroko As you can see I think overall design wise it's definitely trying to mimic the EKG in as many ways as possible The handle right here and of course the handle on the Miroko it's very very similar in terms of shape in terms of handling now of course the upper part of the lid is made out of plastic with the lower part being made out of aluminum it's got a very very nice finish on the inner al aluminum but it definitely looks like it's going to be scratched up quite easily but at the same time it's nice to see that it's a closed off lid as compared to some of the other ones where it's a, a hollowed out lid which definitely definitely makes the lid seems a lot cheaper and with the of course with the three hole designs compared to the EKG man this is turning out to be quite a copy of the EKG in general so I guess my hunch was right when I was looking at this on Amazon and this kettle itself definitely does look smaller than the other three that we have tested however it does claim to have a 0.9 liter capacity so it, it is 0.1 liters more than the other kettles that we have tested and it's rated at 1200 watts which is the same as the EKG and of course the other one that we have that's 1200 watts as well is the Kosori which we unboxed on the previous video all right, so additionally, when it comes to the exterior of the kettle itself, just like on the EKG, it does have a very, very clean uh, finish on the bottom of the kettle. It doesn't have that little bulging, I guess that metal mend line, I suppose you should say. And of course, on the place where the gooseneck spout uh, meets the body, it does have a cleaner finish uh, than the other two. Now, one very interesting thing to know about this handle right here is that this piece is actually also metal. So very, very similar to that shiny piece on the EKG it does get very very hot once you start to boil water in it but what's good about this one is that the handle actually extends out just about half an inch well approximately almost like half an inch uh, longer so when you're holding it your thumb is actually much further away than the metal piece than that on the EKG so in terms of having the risk of being burned by that metal ring the Miracle does do it a little bit better in this case in terms of overall handle shape even though they look very very identical they are a little bit different because this handle shape when you hold it you does feel that you're holding the kettle a lot straighter than that on the EKG where your hand just curves in and bends uh, just that slightly more so in terms of that it does feel a little bit different but overall I think I'm very very happy with the design of this particular kettle now before moving on I do want to take your attention to the base here a little bit on the back it does have a very very similar system to the EKG you have a toggle for the keep warm function and it also have a Celsius and Fahrenheit toggles button it's not a switch it's a button on the side and it looks like there's a mute button uh, there's a mute function that built into the same button as well it does not have a retractable core system which once again I would have liked to see and of course on the front we just have this dial it's quite large it's nice but it's got a piano black finish which means it's going to be quite prone to scratches and of course fingerprint and just like the EKG it's have a toggle on off button right here and the display should be right over here hidden underneath the plastic piece all right so let me go ahead and get this plugged in and we will run it through our boiling test and of course i'll talk about the rest of the kettle when we are done all right guys so just like with the previous kettles i have filled both of these kettle up with the same amount of water one thing i do notice about this one uh, well of course also with the fellow ekg is that the max line is much higher up on the kettle itself so even though this have a smaller footprint 
it does hold more water, just like on the Fellow EKG. It, you, you know, the, the, the footprint itself is not that much uh, bigger than the other two kettles. However, the other two kettles max line is a lot lower. So therefore it does restrict how much water you can actually place in there. So anyways, let me go ahead and close the lid. And of course we'll go ahead and time the time it takes to boil. Now both of these are functioning very very similarly. So once again this criteria if you like the way things are on the EKG and you just want a direct replacement so it seems like the Morocco is the closest one so far. So again press on the circle here to turn it on. You turn the dial to set the temperature. Of course we're going to do 205, 205 on this side, hold is on, hold is on and we will go ahead and start the timer. Uh, I know it's it's a little bit of a delay start but the whole point is to see if there is a huge difference in terms of which one will finish faster so you know we're not we're not timing the exact time it takes to finish. Uh, since I know the EKG takes around five to six minutes depending on temperature of the water. All right so once again just now the Fellow EKG was able to reach this temperature at just around 5 minutes and 50 seconds, the so same as last week's video. All right, so we just hear the three beeps from the Miroko. Probably about 20 seconds difference, but it also seemed like the Miroko had a delayed start for some reason. Basically, when the EKG was already running, you probably saw it from the video. The EKG was actually already started to run and the Miroko kind of stayed in the same place for a couple more seconds before it finally decided to start heating up. Not sure if this is just something that is built into the design of the kettle, but that's that. Based on its internal reading, it did look like the temperature overshot by about 1 to 2 degrees just now. The hold mode is definitely on, so it's trying to adjust the internal temperature. The EKG always does this thing where when it's close to getting to the 205, it does slow down quite significantly, trying to, to not shoot uh, beyond the, 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 the predetermined temperature. After trying all of these kettles, EKG definitely wins out by a lot in terms of temperature management. Alright, so both of these kettles are just about done. The Miroko is dropping a little bit as far as its own displays is concerned and is currently just trying to manage the temperature, trying to bring it back up it seems. But we will go ahead and probe the internal temperature once it's done boiling again. Alright, so it's, it's done. That's It wasn't too bad, it was fairly quick. I do like this pixelated display though. It's very very large, you can see it on the video here that it's very very large and very very clear. So once again, like I said, I picked this one because it looks so simple and so clean. Alright, so probe number one is going to go into the Miroko, who is showing uh, 206 right now. And probe number two will be going into the EKG. Okay, so both of these are actually showing the same temperature. Even though it's showing 206 on the screen and 204 over here, just like I mentioned in the previous videos, this is to be expected. It's always showing a one degree variance whenever I open the lid, but it's usually within one degree. And the Miroko seems to be actually doing very, very well. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised in, in this particular case where it seemed to be behaving quite similarly to the EKG. And just by looking at the probe, it looked like both of these were staying in the same range for quite a while there. And of course the Miroko just dropped to 201 and it's probably going to reboil the water again to bring it back up. Now, as far as the display temperature is concerned, it does seem that there is a discrepancy in terms of display temperature versus what is on the screen. It's about one to two degrees off, which when we are looking at the overall grand scheme of things compared to the other three kettles, this is probably the most precise screen out of the bunch. So as you can see, just now it shows 201, 201 over here. So I think this temperature that's showing on here is slightly delayed, but overall I think it's quite a bit more accurate than the other three, which I'm very, very impressed by. And of course, as you can see over here just now, this temperature over here got reboiled up to 205. EKG, as you saw through the entire thing, the temperature did not change. It's very, very good at maintaining that exact same temperature throughout the range. Whereas all the other kettles that we have tested, you see that the temperature is likely to always go up and down depending on if it's boiling or it's not. And that is why the EKG is $150 and the rest of these are about one third of the price or half the price. All right, so with that said, let's take out the probes, close the lid. Next, we are just gonna quickly look at the pour handling of these two kettles. Once again, we have our bowl here. First is the EKG. Always as, as expected, it's very, very slow, very, very controlled. With the Miroko. Interesting. So, okay, so in terms of the pour, it actually feels very, very similar to the EKG once again in this area. 
It does have a faster max pour if I'm really trying to pour it out. But in terms of where my wrist is, in terms of how it feels to control the flow, it's very, very similar to the EKG. Probably because of the way that both of these handles are designed and both of these spout are designed. It's angled in a very, very similar fashion. So overall, I, for me, as a EKG user coming to this Miroko, it definitely feels very, very similar and it feels very much um, at home. But of course, as with the other kettles, I will be using this on a daily basis just to make sure the temperature itself uh, holds up overall. I think as a first impression, I definitely think this particular kettle is the most similar to the EKG in terms of overall feel and the operation. I just hope that the temperature management will remain quite well during the actual pullover process. If that's so, this one will have a huge edge over the other three. And one more thing to mention that the beep function is quite handy. After trying out all of these budget options for kettles, I almost wish that the EKG have a beep function to just, I guess, audibly let you know that the temperature is currently ready. And I do appreciate how this kettle also have a option for you to turn off the beeping if you don't like it. How to do that is by long hold the Celsius and Fahrenheit button. And you can long hold again to turn the volume on once one more time. I really think the pixel display is quite charming. Of course, you can show press to toggle between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Very, very nice. And of course, you press it one more time to turn it off. And very, very similar to the EKG, it also have a timer function. To turn the timer function on, it's exactly the same thing. You go ahead and long hold the power button. And it's gonna have the same three, two, one countdown the timer is going to start. But once again, I don't really recommend uh, using this one. I would much prefer using a timer that is on your phone or if you have a separate scale that have a timer, but it is there if you want to have a timer. And just like with the EKG, there's not really a function to pause. You simply have it run. And when you want to stop the timer, you press the button one more time and it's going to go back to the temperature, just a normal temperature hold mode. And that's that. But one thing I do appreciate that this particular kettle do that is better actually than the EKG is actually the toggle. So the hold mode toggle is the same exact sort of setup as the EKG where you sort of just toggle back and forth. But the toggle itself is not as loose as that on the EKG. Like I mentioned before with the EKG, quite a few times when I was moving it around, I would accidentally switch off the hold mode. And this one, it's it have a a very, very slight uh, click to it. So it stays in place quite well. So I do like how this toggle works a little bit better than the EKG. But overall, the EKG obviously have a better build quality. All right, so this has been the unboxing and first impression of the Miroko electric kettle. Hopefully you guys found it to be helpful, especially if you're out there looking for a budget option uh, alternative to the fellow EKG. So please stay tuned for the next video where I will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between all four of these kettles in this particular series. Now, if you're new to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you take a moment and hit the like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you appreciate the content. And of course, share this video with anybody who you think might find it to be helpful. As always, please take care and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.